Welcome to another episode of the Brutality Podcast, where every single week we sit down and chat with all of your favorite musicians in the deathcore scene. This week we are joined by none other than Hunter Young of Psycho Frame and Mood Ring. We were super lucky to have him on just days after the release of Psycho Frame's highly anticipated follow-up EP Automatic Death Protocol. So we get to talk to him about all of that, but also his role as a producer in all things deathcore old and new. Real quick before jumping in, uh, Yan and I do these conversations live on stream every single Wednesday. So if you want to be a part of the conversation, ask your own questions or simply be the first to hear, I'll leave a link to all of that down below in whatever description of wherever you're watching or listening. We also have a Discord where we talk about all things MySpace, Deathcore and Metalcore. It's also the best place to keep up with all of our upcoming guests and just general events that are happening with the streams. With that out of the way, please enjoy our conversation with Hunter Young. We have Hunter Young with us. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Fucking just chilling. Hell yeah, hell yeah. You, uh, you're in the studio right now? That's what you were saying? That's the yeah. studio where you work out of? Always. That's it. So. Is, that like a, is it like a separate space or is it like a... Like a part of like your house or someone else's house or something like that uh so the way it works is like we our whole like living area is upstairs it has a bunch of rooms and then the whole downstairs area is just studios like my studio and um and uh brand studio behind me cool that's awesome man um i just wanted to to take the time just real quick to uh i don't know we, we talked a bit off uh off camera but um Thank you so much for taking the time to do this uh, for, for anyone who's been living under a rock. I mean, you just put out one of the craziest fucking EPs, uh, I was going to say of the year, but quite honestly, in the past, like a lot of few years, I, I, I want to say decade, uh, it's, it's really something that to me, I feel like has uh, breathed a lot of new life into what we're used to seeing in deathcore, especially if you consider, you know, uh, the kind of current trends and things that are popping up right now in deathcore. Uh, I think it's safe to say me and Yan, we, we both kind of grew up through uh, MySpace and and the OG deathcore bands and stuff like that. And we're both uh, pretty nostalgic for that sort of sound in general. But that being said, I think you could have made uh, music that just sounds from back then, but you managed to, I think Yan put it best the other day, he kind of uh, said like, it feels like we we put a, a, a freeze on Deathcore in like 2008 and then it just unfroze. And what you guys are doing is kind of like the natural progression of what that old school sound would have been. Um, so I just want to thank you again for, for first first and foremost for the music, but for uh, for being here with us uh, today. No, I appreciate it very much. That's a super kind compliment. I, that's definitely a mission statement of ours for sure. So I, I really fucking appreciate that. Yeah, like, I think it's no secret because I literally did a video about it. But um, in my mind, when we heard about, like, a deathcore revival, and no disrespect to all the other men over there, but I was kind of expecting something heavy like that, like, deathcore at its best like this. And when Dumb told me, like, dude, you should, you should hear that, I was just blown away. And then I see um done from waking on one of your songs i'm like it's waking has always been one of my favorite freaking band and um yeah it just feels right dude i feel like a lot of people were waiting for a sound like that uh, for what it's worth so they're the shit like i fucking love that band (laughs) so to have him is so fucking sick oh i mean yeah and done is a i mean he's a beast yo he's so sick he fucking snapped (laughs) in the song man it's it's uh and, and the way you include his vocals and stuff like right it's we were all like blown away seriously like i think the collab fits really really since you have a lot of like slam i would say influence your sound it's just with done it's it was just perfect you know yeah that was definitely something that we wanted to do for sure like he uh that last record they came out with in 2021 was so fucking sick and I slept on it pretty hard. And then when I went I back, think most people slept on it, yeah. right? Dude, yeah, yeah, it's it's super slept on. When I went back to it, I was like, holy fuck, this is insane. Um, it's just like such a level up for that band. And um the Don thing is cool because Don 
wrote his part. He did fucking yeah, Civic Assault exactly. That's the fucking track. Um, <laughs> he he did everything. You know, there's actually a version of the song that's completely different, like with uh, both of our singers on it, and what they okay. had was fucking crazy. So when we got Dawn shit back, it was just completely different, like very different style. And um, yeah, I don't know. It was like hard for us because we were so used to the way it was, but then. That's always such a weird, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even sometimes from like the a demo version to a song or, or, or hearing to something that's unmixed and you kind of get used to how that sounds. And then you hear like a final mix and you're like, whoa, I'm just like not used to it. You know, it sounds better, but you're like, wait, I have this other version in my brain. Yeah. I can't imagine for like a fully, completely different vocal part, right? I don't send bands demos for that reason. Like we call yeah. that demo-itis, like straight up. Like when we work with people and they want stuff back like i'm just like nah you're gonna have to wait because i know you're gonna listen to it five thousand times and then you're not and then you're not gonna like the mix yeah yeah, so. yeah. There, there's something about critiquing the unfinished yep. product as well too right that's like kind of prone to trying to then steer you into different directions whereas you already have that vision you know where it's going but you can't just like tell them like dude like shut up it's it's chill we're gonna we're gonna get there and it's gonna sound good you know yo straight up <laughs> yeah straight up I um dude the the I, I I'm I'm kind of blown away because you you put out two EPs uh this year uh doing one amazing EP would have been one thing you put out the the first one and uh I think most people were kind of thinking to themselves how the fuck are they gonna top it and then obviously in in Psycho Frame uh, fashion you guys were, were hyping it up but not not in a cheesy like we're hyping up our next release kind of thing but you know you, you guys kind of have this um badass aura <laughs> uh, uh, around the image right uh and it was kind of like yeah wait till you guys see this shit it's like fucking blows the old shit out of the water and and it was just hard to um hard to imagine and i guess i i asked i asked this to to one of our our last guests because he's in a similar situation where i guess he um the, you know, uh, Brand of Sacrifice, do you know them? I'm assuming. Yeah, I do. Okay. So, uh, Leo, the guitarist, he kind of similarly to you, um, you know, he's, he produces the band as well as plays guitar in the band. And, you know, he's, he was talking to us the, the other time about how, uh, you know, there's no, there's less friction between writing a song and getting the idea out because he's kind of like doing it all. He, he does it in his own studio. He doesn't have to rely on other people and stuff like that, but it still kind of uh, blew my mind because he as well has been putting out a lot of music and you can tell that between each release, there is like a big kind of leap, a progression between the albums. But I, I, I see two EPs from you guys in a single year and it's just mind blowing to me. I'd, I'd love to hear kind of your process about uh, going from one EP to the other and kind of not doing the same thing again and really taking that sound and evolving it into something else and how you kind of go about it. Because there is such a big leap, I feel, uh, between the yep. two EPs. And just to add up to that, with the uh, best snare sound ever recorded <laughs> anywhere. So... so so many snares to make one snare sound. That's that's what that is. So there's there's like eight. Um, wow. On both whatever, of them. Whatever it takes. Yeah, he... <clears throat> Brandon did the uh, first snare, obviously, with me just sitting there going, more, more, more. But <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's, it's so many fucking snare sounds layered to make one. And so now, actually, with the live aspect of it i'm like how the fuck yeah how, you know <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of like the the snare the snare bomb like sample you're gonna have the same thing but for every snare hit <laughs> dude yeah i don't know <laughs> that's definitely a thing um yeah so i started working on remote god seeker last year i think fall maybe of last okay. year like there's a whole ep that existed first which okay. a lot of it made it onto it but a lot of it didn't at all. Like it was, uh, kind of had it was like sending it to the group chat, you know, of everyone going to be involved and everyone was going to be, you know, everyone was stoked on it, but I kind of sat back and was like, is this, is this, uh, like brolic enough? Does this have enough? Like, uh, I wanted to be more technical and I wanted to be more hectic. Um, yeah. so I kind of looked at all the songs and anything that wasn't, um, that I essentially just gutted it. 
and it just made it more ridiculous. So like I wanted like every single part like in between breakdowns to either be really like hectic and techy or um catchy. Um and if you could get both going on at the same time, like hell yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um so we when I moved to Georgia, um Whittle and Mike, both the singers, came here. They were my first like people I recorded in the new studio. And they knocked out the vocals for Remote God Seeker in honestly like less than a week. Okay. I, we did the mix like a, a week after that and then just pretty much immediately dropped it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And then I didn't start so I didn't start working on ADP. Well, sorry, sorry to cut you off, but were were all the vocal parts like already written and stuff? Or are you guys like in that week like wrote the vocals as well? I think they kind of write lyrics and or not that I think they'll Whittle for sure definitely writes lyrics with patterns in mind. Mm -hmm. Um, so there was a lot, but then they have me as well. And, right. you know, so I'll just kind of be like, Hey, this is cool. You know, or let's change this a little bit, but like for, they, for the most part come with like done songs okay, vocally. Cool. And if there's like parts that they want, me to do i do as well too yeah yeah. i mean that, so. that, that at that point is kind of just part of the studio process right you realize things and try things out while while you're recording and stuff for sure it's fucking cool that we have like three people who are all like have like unique voices who can all do shit so mm -hmm. it's um and then i didn't start working on automatic death protocol at all like whatsoever until after uh, remote god seeker was out so mm. it came out and i was like all right fuck it let's do it again and that, was, that was it so and it was yeah uh, i guess there wasn't there wasn't any like b-sides from the old like ep or anything like that. it was kind of like going straight from okay you learned from that one experience and okay let's just keep doing that shit and make it even crazier i guess literally nothing yeah mo like mo like months after the fact i mean literally uh the nothing survived from like stuff yeah, i don't yeah. save b-sides i don't do any of that if i don't like something i just delete it and i don't mean yeah, like, like if, if it doesn't make it it's not worth it kind of thing yeah exactly exactly so we, that's uh, yeah go ahead, we, go ahead we try to like i i've tried to do the whole like let's compile riffs let's like have a bank to work mm. from and stuff but it just it never works out that way i never go back to it so <laughs> um I are you are you mostly doing like everything I guess for for the writing instrumental portions like drums and everything as well? For RGS like yeah, like the majority of it. Um again to mention Austin Coop. Austin is someone I always bring in, especially like when I'm I don't know, it's it's I produce a lot of people other people's music, so and I hit this kind of like 90% wall with my stuff where I'm like, damn, I need, I need someone else to like fucking get yeah. me to the finish line. Um, it, tell me this sucks or tell me it doesn't, you know, like, yeah. um, and be real about it. So that's kind of what his role with, um, remote God seeker was. And then our guitarist, Aiden, AKA Dave Mustrange, he looks like Dave Mustaine. Yep. He, <laughs> um, he co-wrote Jag Nazarene and then okay. our, our old bassist worked on raining glass with me. Um, Dave has more riffs on automatic death protocol. He worked on bone crown deformity and he also worked on a further showing of violence. And then sure. the rest of it is just Austin and I just go and ham, like just back and yeah, forth. Yeah, yeah. He was here to work on mootering essentially. And I could not get anything out that I wanted to. And I said, <laughs> we're just going to fucking do this. I, I literally hit them up the other people in the band was like it's done here you go you know <laughs> that's we literally need, how it went we, we need vocals stat <laughs> yeah straight up i was like i don't know what y'all are doing but uh book a flight so because <laughs> i guess uh yeah you've got you've got members kind of all over the place right for uh for oh the yeah band right now we're so super where, where, where's everyone at so i'm atlanta uh dave mustrange is savannah so he's like three and a half hours yeah. southeast of me Jordan, other other guitarist, is in Daytona, where I'm originally from, and then yeah, Whittle is actually in the chat right now. Um, he's in he's in St. Louis, and so is Mike. Okay, so I'm uh, dumb. I don't want to skip your questions no, or no, anything. Good, no, no. I'm also very curious about the art style and the choices behind, like because it's all amazing. But I'm guessing there's some like, did it take a long time for you to come up with that? Is is was that like kind of a just 
spontaneous type of like decision. The physical like cover art for the EPs? Yeah, I mean the the cover art, merch, oh, okay. anything art related. I think there's there's like a vibe to like yeah. all of it, right? I think most of it kind of fits well together, even from EP to EP. You know, you get the, there's the, the pink that kind of follows through and stuff like that. The logo. That's the, that's the same artist for sure. Um, he Dusty Ray, aka Slop Jockey. I've been a fan of his stuff for a long time, and when I was talking to Nick from Wax Vessel about stuff, um, we're just kind of thinking about how to package it, and we didn't want to do like computer generated slam looking stuff yeah. you know which is kind of expected of us so doing this like gauche like painting was definitely like cool as fuck and i think it, i think it paid off for sure um it looks insane for what it's yeah. worth it was, oh, yeah, both, I love both, it. both albums album covers look fucking super fucking cool and most mostly like stand out so much from everything else that's been put out I think so too. Like when I see it online, if I'm just scrolling and I see a, a large group of records, I'm always like, damn, our shit is fly. You know, <laughs> like that looks like it's, it's the first thing my eye goes to. So I think that's cool. Yeah. Um, I was, I was curious, uh, because you know, I work in marketing, so obviously I'm interested in that and it felt very calculated, uh, meaning that your music really stands out right from at, at least from for a lot of people it really stands out from the usual death core we get and your art it felt like you know it was a conscious decision to stand out with it as well so you're just confirming um what what makes sense uh, to me so definitely just want to do something different and then you know uh merch we've used a bunch of different designers uh tim yeah. tim minazark has done most of our merch at this point because i have worked with him heavily with Mootering. I mean, done a ton. So he's kind of my go-to guy. Um, this dude, Rui, did um, this, like... Oh, I yeah. I, he, I, I follow him. He does a whole bunch of really cool fucking stuff. He does. He, the, the coolest one he did is I had uh, my MRI photos. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. That's so fucking sick. Directly yeah, that, on the shirt. That was so fucking tight. And then, oh, yeah, to answer the thing in the chat... Uh, a dude named Kai a Lab Thirteen Media did our logo. Just absolutely fucking smashed so it. So sick, so freaking sick. He he does a lot of stuff with wax, uh, wax vessel, right? Yeah, he's pretty. He might yeah. as well be in house at this point, you know. Yeah, <laughs> he he does a lot for them. Mm -hmm. So I think I think a lot of their. Especially when it comes to like their their repressings and stuff, the re-releases, because uh, you you did you did a a silence re-release through through them, right? And Culture Killer, yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, I I've always really enjoyed the uh, reimaginings of of a lot of uh, of these artworks from kind of back in the day that you know looked cool for for what it was back then. But the stuff he's been able to to bring to the table for a lot of those releases have been super cool. The guy who runs it, Nick, is super anal about art. Like, he's very, like, it's got to be the craziest thing ever. Like, you should see the, some of the fucking suggestions he sent to me for Psycho Frame <laughs> stuff. It's, I was like, dog, what is this? You know? <laughs> so, yeah. so uh, Dusty, like, a.k.a. Slop Jockey, was definitely uh, our uh, our compromise, but I'm very glad that we did. He's yeah, That yeah. guy, Nick is looking at art all fucking day for sure. And he... I mean, he's got so much going on, you know, yeah. in, in terms of, like, how many releases they put out and... The shit they're doing, so yeah, you think every time I think it's gonna slow down, it just never fucking does. So, <laughs> the, ADP was our last like released like through um, Wax Hustle yeah. though, like that, like that's it. It's it's done. Mm -hmm. Do you have? I don't know if it's not if it's not too personal or or uh, <laughs> or like in the way of throwing shade or whatever. Is there a particular reason for that? Is it just you guys want to do your own thing? Oh yeah, uh, we just have we just have new stuff going on. Yeah, like, cool. Yeah, one hundred percent. So awesome, man. I mean, speaking, speaking of the, of the release though, I mean, I was, I was looking up on, on, uh, on his socials. You guys sold over 1300 vinyls of this so, last, this ass album. Something That's like that. Absolutely insane. It's insane. I mean, let alone, let alone like a CD, right? Like even, even that amount in CDs would be something, but vinyls, I feel like sure. There's like, obviously through, through, you know, a bunch of these, these labels that are doing like Wag Vessel and Secret Swarm and stuff like that, there's been like a, a, a big um, resurgence, I guess, in, in that sort of medium. But um, that's still like, that's still super fucking niche at the end of the day, like buying vinyls, right? N not anymore. I think it's the most like purchased physical format at this point. I mean, oh, yeah. Eh? More than CDs, I guess, at this point. Yeah, I, dude, Deathcore is the only genre I ever see people ask for CDs for like at all. And they get really <laughs> mad at us that we don't press CDs, but it's just, yeah. the reality is, and this is going to sound like super fucked and like, you know, 
greedy and capitalist is. But if I give you a cheaper option, you're yeah. taking the cheaper option. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So... Like yeah, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have sold 13, 1300 vinyls, ab- right? Absolutely not. You know, mm-hmm. um, not even close. But in fairness to Wax Vessel and like that community, they there's something wild going on there. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 an anomaly in itself. Like like we would have done a okay on our own, but that mm-hmm. that's a whole different thing. You know. Yeah, I yeah, feel well, like I, in a okay. few years I'm gonna make a video on my channel. It's gonna be the wild rise on of Psycho Frame or something like the. I feel like the, it's going fast. Like, I mean, it's like most of the time the first year it's just like it's you write, you do your stuff. Like you know, I do. That's what I do every week. I read history of bands and stuff like that, and it's way yeah, I've, slower. Yeah, I've seen a bunch of videos. It. It's like, oh, thanks. That's awesome, yeah. man. Thanks for uh, for watching. Um, I'm super interested in all, you know, where it was born, like bands like Elysia and like, you know, like the very first deathcore round. And um, but it takes time. Like most of these bands, the first year they were like writing mostly and taking their time. And in your case, you you guys just within your first year, it's like it's blowing up. It's, it's we're, we're beast. Yeah, I don't, it's dude. Crazy. I write like a fucking insane person like i just i don't know <laughs> it works though yeah it just uh, the way i work is i will just like open a session and i'll go and i generally don't want to stop until the song is done and if i can't finish a song but like from the time i open the session to the end of it i probably won't use it so okay kinda yeah. has to, it has to flow it's kind of like a flow state and it's got to in the emotion the yeah. Like, yeah, yeah exactly I just got to be hyped on it and like having fun and like getting like the adrenaline from it. And because if I, it, it, I just always know if I keep coming back to something, it's never actually going to come out. Mm. So that's, I guess there's probably something to be said about it. If you're not hyped enough to finish it and when go, it's like not worth your time kind of thing. No. Yeah. I mean, and that doesn't work for everyone. Obviously there's definitely people mm. who are like, well, I spent 10 years writing this record and it's, it's a fucking, <laughs> you know, and it's a fucking masterpiece, like good for them. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I just got to like, I'm not gonna, it, yeah, like like Casey said, I'm not gonna force it. You know, it's it's just gotta happen naturally. Yeah, and and maybe you know this um, way of working is probably why your music is so surprising. And it's like one uh, each song, as much as like it's a whole vibe, it's always very unique and surprising in its own ways. And it's maybe part of like part of the reason is your writing process. I'm guessing you know the way you work is so. different. Yeah, I hope so. so. I try to work with that way with like anyone that works with us in the studio too, you know. If we're getting hung up on something, like we just we move on to something else. Yeah, so. probably. I guess for for you, as much as much for songwriting as it is, I guess as a producer, that's the same sort of mindset. I guess for you for you too, right? Like kind of half finishing something and having to come back the next day to finish it off or continue writing is kind of like a bummer more than anything else. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> so <laughs> I try I try not to just try to like just get it going. Uh, there there there's really is something that just to that flow stay, right? And how 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 it can take a little bit of time to even get into that mood in the first place. And if you're constantly having to combat that to throughout multiple sessions to each <laughs> each and every single time to like get back into it. It it it, it is like a quote unquote waste of time at the end of the day as well, right? Like you're kind of being frustrated, starting something out and being like, ah, oh, I'm not feeling it yet. And then, you know, hope that in two hours you're, you're in it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, you know? So <laughs> if I'm not feeling it off rip, like I'm just, I'm going to move on to something else. So, um, to answer the question in the chat, what is my favorite song on ADP? It is definitely straight jacket afterbirth. That is 100% my favorite song. On- we, we, we asked earlier, we had a lot of different responses, but that song was the, the one that, that popped up the, the most. Yeah. I wanted to drop it first so bad. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that song is so much fun. I mean, they're they're all bangers though. That I guess you know people. They could were all be su- singles. Is that fair to say? Like they could have been all like singles, and it would have been. You know what I mean? Like there is no filler at all. Like I wouldn't even say that there's like a filler riff. Everything seems to be calculated. And it's 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 awesome. It's pretty rare. I mean, we we do that all the time, listening to albums and EPs and stuff, and. Um, most I don't of the time listen that, to full albums ever because there's yeah, too much bullshit. Yeah, in exactly, there. exactly. You know, there's like you can tell which songs you know they put a lot of time in, and which songs were more of a you know one of their uh, 
songs, but uh, dude, for sure, yeah. There's there's so much throwaway material out there, and like I I totally get it, especially because a lot of bands like are contracted to have to yeah mm. meet, meet a certain runtime and stuff. So they're like, oh, here's the fucking interlude, you know? Like yeah. <laughs> if we're talking like 2006, 2010, like old deathcore interludes are fucking sick, you know? Like yeah, yeah. Uh, At least they were like, heavy. There was something there, right? <laughs> yeah, like what's that fucking one interlude on uh, on Depths? That song is fucking sick. Uh, uh, yeah, I forget the name, but yeah. It's, oh yeah, man. Yeah. It's yeah. Damn. I, uh, What's the name though? It's gonna haunt me. Yeah, Dude, I, I have fucking me of Legions by Whitechapel coming to my head, but I gotta fucking figure this out. I'm looking it up right now. <laughs> We're uh, they're both yeah, looking it up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there are three people that are watching. Uh, where the fuck is it? Uh, I agree. By the way, like old interview or uh, interlude was they were sick. It's the song Depths. <laughs> Seriously? Uh, oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Wow. Other uh, calls is best. I'm trying to bleed interlude with the chimp 911 call. Yeah, dude. The song. Oh, and then she bled. That track is fucking crazy. Yeah. I, yeah. It's, there, there's something. There's something to be said with not having any filler at all. Like I, I just this 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 EP specifically. I feel like there's. You know, it, it ends. Uh, I, I was talking about this earlier. It ends with "Kill Yourself." Like those are the final, like lyrics to to the album, and it's right up to the end of uh, of the track. There's no like outro thing. It's just straight. It cuts, and I just have the album. I just have the EP on loop, and then it just starts off again. And there's no intro either. It's like nope. straight into a song, and it, it's just such a it's such a joy to listen to just and just have on loop like it just kind of plays seamlessly and there's no there's no skipping tracks there's no i don't know and and the same can be said to the previous ep as well um i don't know man i just yeah. I, it's, it's just so refreshing to hear yeah like whittle said in the chat it, it definitely was all planned that's that was that was the goal you know just everything is like a mission statement you know what i mean well, that was one of your early things, right? The no gimmicks, no, you know, you had like the, this four, no symphonies, no whistle screams, no, yeah, <laughs> you know, like calling out a bunch of things. And I was like, yeah, yeah. No, fuck all that shit. Like no bullshit. I was about to say that too. Like, I really appreciate that the vocals, there is no like trendy, you know, vocals that we see everywhere. It's just straight up brutal vocals, like at its, at its best. Like, like Dumb said, it feels like these vocals are the, evolution of what that core were at back in the days and just <laughs> yeah. factory yeah yeah so <laughs> i i really appreciate that because as much as like i'm not saying it's it's not good i feel like there's a lot of really talented vocalists out there i'm just saying in terms of what i prefer you know it was awesome to see that there's no i don't know what to call it like new wave vocals gimmick or whatever we call it the vocal olympics yeah um <laughs> Yeah. yeah yeah i mean yo here's a here's a deal like uh, of course like super talented like do your own thing like do whatever you want to do it's just not what we're into you know and a lot of people get mad about that when we're like yeah we're just not into that shit and um they're like what how it's like because i'm old motherfucker like what do you mean <laughs> like like i'm i'm older than the band's doing that so like i don't yeah no, yeah. I get it. I get it. But but to be fair, I think a big part of well, I mean, everything you guys are doing is right. I think we said that many times with Dumb. It feels like every step, everything you're you're doing is just like it feels right. But I also think there's a lot of people that feels the same way you guys are feeling, right? Like a lot of, of fans around there. Like the the that's what they want too. They're kind of tired of the gimmick and the you know whatever is going on and do you want some pure whatever Something you guys raw, are doing man. yeah there you go raw it's it's funny because like people often like say like oh yeah you guys have raw production and stuff it's like we really don't it's just not like processed in hell like processed the hell and back like the uh like the way a lot of shit is now so they're like the juxtaposition between the two, like the, like the contrast is they're like, Oh my fucking God, this is recorded in a garbage can. But the reality <laughs> is it's still like high fidelity. It's just not like, doesn't sound like fucking Michael Bay death core, like with explosions and, you know, like, yeah, yeah. you know, crazy <laughs> sounds <laughs> happening every second. 10,000 backing tracks. And <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah. We're just not interested in that. And again, no shade to anyone who is, it's just not our thing. No, exactly. But we've been discussing that uh, here on stream many times when we were listening to your to, to what we're doing. It feels like it's the sweet spot 
with a, you know, between like a very good production while sounding, you know, brutal and keeping that anger in, in, in the sound. It feels like you're kind of, you know, because it's still, it sounds super quality too, right? Like, I mean, I, I've tried basically everywhere in my car, speakers everywhere <laughs> sounds amazing, but I feel like it, it might be also the songwriting. I think it's a whole, you know, it, it, it's everything. Um, but it's not easy to find a balance, I believe. I think other bands out there are trying, but it's pretty difficult to find this balance of rawness and production. So Whittle just said in the chat, hardcore influence deathcore. I think that's like literally probably the best way to put it is we're not, it's not like we're actually like influenced by hardcore. Like we actually like hardcore. A lot of us come from hardcore, you know, and are still, you know, that's still our shit. You know, look at the features. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, but most modern bands, if you're like, name a hardcore band, they're they're gonna fail pretty bad. They're so, closer to death metal for sure. It's way closer uh, to death but, metal. But in like modern metal. death metal, at that, you know, it's yeah. like yeah. they're closer to like something like I don't know, like Tech Death, like Art Spire or something. True. You know yeah. what I mean? It's not. They're not like close to like Cryptopsy, which is no, 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 mo something mo that like, modern modern death metal, yeah. So we're taking you know hardcore and combining it with shit like Suffocation and like Cryptopsy, and mm -hmm. that's like more like what we want to do. Or it's, you know, a, a big one for us is Dying Fetus for sure. I mean, yeah, yeah. So I mean, which is what a lot of death but it was from like back that. in the day. That's that's where the influences were, right? Like Funny that's enough. what people were. Where the were fuck combining. did it go? Like, that's yeah, my yeah. point. Oh my god, it's so well said. Like because people here, like mostly in our chat and our community, they know. I, I kept saying that the hardcore elements in deathcore is like super important. Like it needs to be. There's like, like, like none now. They think they think yeah. like people think that breakdowns means hardcore. No, wrong. <laughs> nope. Like that's a that's an attitude and an aesthetic more than it is like a sound. You know what I mean? So, um, that's something that can't be taught or like that's something that you just have to experience like with your life and like go through and be a part of versus fucking you know look it up on the internet and like trying to figure it out like like anyone can fucking like pick up a riff and like you know pick up a guitar and like play a, a, a hardcore riff but like to to actually get it is a different thing um yep. yep yeah like whittle said you're spent cold again that's a big one for us too um if you're not Love familiar so, the, 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 those guys were way too short-lived like the like i lifeless is the lifeless is the name of the album or is just the 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 whatever album that track is on dude, dude is so fucking good man they're so fucking sick yeah like uh and and johnny said like two steps um something that you guys are doing in your music that i really appreciate is that you kind of mix the hardcore roots yeah, two step good. parts we only have one with slam kind of i don't know it, to only we only have the one two step out of the two out of the two eps um uh, Oh yeah, maybe I'm not expressing myself. I, I mean, when it's bouncy, maybe, yeah, you're you're right. Maybe it's not all two step, but like your music is always like. I mean, it's groovy, maybe more. For sure, I'm trying to. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely like a the death the like the death part of the band definitely isn't influenced by. Well, ADP especially isn't like influenced by deathcore really. It's influenced by more like brutal death metal and like you know, slam. So I mean, because that's. That's what I'm putting on first, you know, personally. Yeah. Yeah. But again, no shade. I everyone get their bag, everyone do cool stuff. We just we just kinda like what we like, you know. Yeah, I mean I think you're at the right place to talk about these things. Like we're obviously all super into like my what I used to love a lot, I don't know if you remember the bands like Demolisher, Jerome, stuff like that, like super yeah, beat down. Like yeah. it's like when Deathcore kind of you know, in 2012, 13, it kind of went away and it was more of a Gen T type of era. And then it really felt like hardcore was like gone, like the beat down hardcore elements were gone. So and then it came back and straight up they, they were playing with that metal and stuff like that, which I think which is cool. But I think it says a lot about how it was like changing. To, so there's definitely like a new I feel like there's a lot of people who appreciate those hardcore elements who are super satisfied with what you guys are are doing so for sure we've definitely had like if you look at our demographics on like spotify and stuff like our our um listener 
are generally older than younger. So it's not so, surprising that they're like, oh, yeah. shit, there it is, you know? It, it's funny, though, because in a sense, um, Deathcore right now, I, I think it's fair to say, is bigger than ever, right? Like Deathcore in general, whatever yeah, definitely. The, the, the state yeah, is. for it, sure. Um, so one of the things that, that we've noticed with, with doing this stream and, you know, hanging out on Discord and doing all these things is I was, we were very surprised by the amount of younger people, like, kids, you know, like 17, 18, 16 year olds, um, that make up for a decent, uh, a decent size of like our quote unquote fan base, like people that are interacting with us and hanging out in the streams and doing all these things. Uh, I think there's a lot of, um, interest as well. I think for the same reasons that we were interested in those bands back then, I think there's something to be said about like the, I don't know how to say it, like the run is the danger, the 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 angst, I guess, that was behind a lot of that early, early death core that maybe isn't the trend so much anymore. But I think people that are in that same space today as like a 17 year old uh, are finding uh, are, are finding those same that same kind of energy really appealing right now as well. Yeah, definitely. It, it does uh, appear to be the case. It's like our discord is literally like yeah 40 year old dudes and then very they're very young besides that um yeah i've noticed on my on my channel i was very surprised like when i started this like my youtube in my mind i was like okay it's all gonna be my age and older right i'm talking about like years ago and funny enough i've seen i have plenty of comments of people being like oh i wasn't around during the myspace era i didn't know these bands it's cool to hear about them uh one of her you know um a, a member of her community discovered uh an addition of an, an autopsy sorry for the terrible pronunciation um while he was watching my video now he absolutely loves the band which is kind of you know That's amazing so sick. yeah so um another classic in death core obviously so um yeah so it's it, it's cool to see also younger people being attracted like th that's how a type of music survive as well you know if it's only older people and it they move on it's kind of you know it's gone so yeah exactly i think there's something cool about like younger kids like wanting to learn about what happened before because yeah. i think for a long time that was not happening at all you know what I mean? True. So I think the fact that kids like want to go back and like learn about cool shit, you know, maybe because they heard someone older in the scene who they thought was cool go, oh, well, I like fucking band X, you know, and Y and Z. They're like, well, what the fuck is that? So True. them going back and finding related stuff and like want to learn the history. You know, when I was getting, getting into music, I wanted to know fucking everything about every band, you know, I found. Um, but you couldn't back then yeah. you know, there was nothing you know and that's that also made bands a lot cooler yeah, yeah so yeah. true yeah it's kind um, of the, but the state of that genre is still kind of at that point though right like it, it, sure we've got you know like yan's a, a perfect example of someone who's like you know putting forward this information that's like super hard to 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 seek out and stuff like that and and put these like stories and origin stories into into the forefront but i think for the most part i mean youtube wasn't around like th there isn't even like old like a lot of the shit that lived on myspace like these old demos and shit that's it's all gone. Like it doesn't, it doesn't exist. Yeah, it anywhere. really so is. It, it's it kind of crazy. To, it would be great yeah. if it would be still, imagine if you could still go on MySpace and the songs would still be there and it would be so freaking I've sick. tried, I've tried to go back to my old band's MySpace before and like, be like, oh damn, is that demo version still there? I really want to yeah. hear it. it <laughs> it's, it's not, it's gone forever. Yeah. Uh, to answer the chat, my favorite Fear Factory album is definitely obsolete. It's not even fucking close. <laughs> um, I love how every answer is like it's it's not like between two, it's like <laughs> nah. this this <laughs> That's Yeah it. no I, you got to you got to have be decisive yeah. so. I love that it's great but uh yeah no it's it's definitely um from someone who who do that like I do that every week right doing research on bands and stuff like that there's certain bands that there's so little information that I literally need to talk to the band like I need to literally ask them what happened back oh, then dude so especially with your channel i feel like it'd be super fucking hard there's like some really obscure ones out there i so. mean 
Yeah, they're like, and sometimes also the ch the challenge is like something big happened, right? Like for example, like an accident or something. You don't want to say it wrong. You don't want like you don't want to miss anything. So like when I'm doing my videos, I'm always like, okay, I need to. It needs to like um, a good example that comes to mind, even if there was a lot of information. What I did, suicide silence. It was a, it was like a big video with like Mitch and stuff like. I was honestly almost terrified of doing it. I remember telling Dom, I'm like, what if I, you know, I want to do a good job on this one. So like, um, documenting in, in era, it, it says a lot about the whole death court thing. Like yeah. very little information is, um, available and, um, you know, hopefully in the future it's going to be different and maybe more uh, when myspace died everything went with it man like that's oh yeah like just really the reality of it it was done the second myspace died yep. i mean it it floundered kind of for a couple years after that you know i mean but it had switched at that point already like it had already kind of it was getting genty yeah it was getting genty or, or a lot of beat down, but like boring beat down like very uninspired kind of uh mid like down tempo beat down kind of stuff uh, that wasn't, yeah. in a sense, was more hardcore than anything else, but it wasn't really like the essence of, of deathcore all it was that much. Far, like, I called it like a, I could be wrong, but for me, it was like a softer version of hardcore. Like, I understand that it was like genty and stuff, but it was all banged and cutting, cutting. Like, it wasn't mm. like for me, I was missing like the demolisher germ. Yeah, I, I just wanted to be slapped in the face, man. We were yeah. doing it for a while. We call those, we call those bucket of chicken riffs. <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> Daryl everything you say is like it's it's good t-shirt ideas yeah dude like so good we talk we talk shit <laughs> so yeah no it's 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 part of the bit you know it's kind of low-key whatever like what a lot of people think if we're being honest here though like when every time I'm always trying to be respectful but I have to be honest when that core kind of went away I, I do remember it's clear in my memory you know like Recuver wasn't in Suffocate anymore bands were like Mitch passing stuff like that. I was like oh my god we're losing and Many real deathcore bands were like turning more not deathcore death anymore, metal yeah. or like they were going in other directions. So I was like, what is happening? And honestly, the gent era, I've never seen in my life more copy than a copy than a copy than a copy of another band. Like it was all sounding and I know it sounds like a hater, but it was so I mean, always the same. I think the one of the problems that we have now is that people get mad when you don't like the same things that they like. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So for like, yeah, man, 90% of gent fucking sucked. I mean, there, <laughs> there, there was cool shit too. And I say that as a guy who was in a MySpace deathcore band that turned into a gent band. Like mm -hmm. I silence literally yeah, happened. Silence kind of became that. It, yeah, for sure. 100%. So, you know, do I regret it? Fuck. Yeah. But <laughs> whatever, well, here we are. Yeah, yeah, here we are. People, um, people ask me all the time, like, "Oh, well, now that MySpace Deathcore is back, like, why wouldn't you do another Silence record?" It's like, because Psycho Frame is a better band. Like, what the fuck are you mm -hmm, talking mm -hmm. about? You know? <laughs> so, no, yeah, it's because yeah, because you moved on. Like, whatever. There, there's like a million valid reasons for not revisiting that either. Like, it's you know. No, but I, I mean, it's, you don't you don't owe anyone a reason for that no. sort of thing, you know? <laughs> Dude. People like get like really mad, but you know, like the same stuff as them. And it, I think people take what we do like way too seriously as well. Like, in the sense where we, you know, like we fucking roast people. It's fun. But mm -hmm. do you think we actually care what you listen to? No, man. Like, you can go listen to whatever the fuck you want. It does not bother us, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but people are really easy now to, you know, to like, it's very easy to create a reaction nowadays. Like people are taking the bait every time. Like you just say a little thing and now the, the in your, in their mind, it's like for, for the Ben, it was like a statement and you're like, you're going after them. They're like, it was just a joke, dude. Like just. Yeah, for relax. sure. We're, like, we're, we just fuck around. Like gatekeeping isn't real, man. You can listen to whatever the fuck you want. Yep. So. I mean, I, I think, don't. I think a lot of people don't think that way, though, which is which is crazy to me. Like, it's I, weird. I, I think yeah. people genuinely like think their opinions are like fact. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I definitely think my opinions are fact, but <laughs> <laughs> but but at the end of the day, like, I don't care like what anyone else is doing. You know what I mean? Like, I mm -hmm. listen to so much bad new metal that people will be like, "This is arguably the worst music I've ever heard in my life." And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> 
I'm like, you're probably right, but it also rips. So, mm-hmm. uh, dude, I, I've been. I don't know if you listen to like even old new metal stuff like Alien and Farm and shit like that. Like I, yeah. I that's my. I keep talking about it. It's still good. People can shit on them as much as they want. It's still good. So. They're a great fucking band. No, that's that's my go-to, honestly. So, <laughs> um, yeah. OG Deathcore went out when fights quit happening at their shows. Yeah, straight up. So let me tell you, let me tell a story real fast. Um, Mm -hmm. So coming from Florida, um, legendary band, King Conquer. King Conquer was so fucking scary live. And I'm talking, I was 14 the first time I saw them. And then it got scarier and scarier. By the time I was 16, they were not allowed to play fucking anywhere like it, oh yeah dude it was bad like their shows were fucking insane like it was legitimately scary like scary the most hardcore shows i went to you know and shit and it was nuts i remember being in transitions art gallery as like a 16 year old like oh i'm gonna fucking die tonight okay all right <laughs> um like yeah no those shows were actually scary um i mean really it's like transition too right like it's like <laughs> yeah dude fucking i miss it um <laughs> But in a certain way, it's pretty cool, though, right? I oh mean, yeah, I just what I want my shows to look like. Are you fucking kidding me? Like if we have a we have a bit in the band that if we are playing and we see people are push moshing, we're just gonna stop playing and start the song over and just keep doing it over and over again. <laughs> so, Makes sense. Yeah, no, I have no interest in that. It's it's. Uh, I'm sorry, dumb. You know I'm gonna plug this now. Like we're talking about King Kong. I really, I really have to say it. It's one of my next uh videos i'm gonna do because the king conquer was a very important band for me and i'm actually i'm i'm gonna talk with chris that's now you know he's in buddy snatcher now and i'm gonna I talk love chris. with him he's such a cool dude um super nice with me by the way like i, I sent a message he's like super stoked that i want to do like a video about uh, about king conquer so i know i'm gonna have the right informations right i think he was in the band since the beginning i could be wrong i think he was there in the original lineup dude. Yeah, when they had three different band names before King Conquer. Okay, there you go. So, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, so I'm super stoked on this video. I remember when I was a kid, I was young, like you, basically, when I discovered King Conquer. And for me, it was the new standard of heaviness. Like, I re- what's the song? Like, digitally transmitted, transmitted whatever. Disease, yeah. yeah. Man, like, it, it, for me, it they was had, the heaviest thing ever. They had been around for a hot minute before that EP dropped. And then, like, when that hit, it was like, oh, fuck, it's different now. And that's why uh, my old band, Silence, went to go fucking uh, record at the same place with them, Charles Wall mm-hmm. and uh, fucking well, so Phil. Definitely King Conquer influences in, in oh, your yeah. Silence, you know? <laughs> Dude, yeah, I mean, I was, I was literally 16 when I did that EP. Mm-hmm. So... And also, I'm curious, like, you heard that guy vocals live. Like, I'm so curious. Like, it must have sounded like he, like a freaking monster. Uh, identical. Or yeah, he was fucking fire. Yeah. He was so, so good. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, I remember the first time I heard those vocals. In my mind, I was like, okay, it's doable to sound like, like that's, that's a doable sound. He's like, loud, too. And that's a big thing with us is, like, mm. you know, like you mentioned in the shirts that said, you know, no whisper box, like, you know, just a little <laughs> gurgly technique, like in your, in your little voice, like, you know, keeping it chill. Like, yeah. no, we're, we're loud, dude. We're bellowing. I fuck, fuck technique. Like, um, so please make a shirt that says fuck technique somewhere. <laughs> yeah, dude, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, he was, he's actually loud. He's such a sick okay. fucking vocalist. Uh, Catalepsy was chill too. Dude, they, they, they were the sickest dude. I, I mean, I didn't, I'll really take King Conquer over Catalepsy any day. Sure. Um, but, but, but dude, I listened to so much, especially the, like the demo versions, the stuff, like the Godless and stuff before inequity, oh, yeah, whatever those for sure. versions were, dude, that shit was so fucking good. I, I Are you really from Florida? Like, no, no, no. Uh, I just, oh, okay. Uh, you mentioned, you mentioned King Conquer transitions and Catalepsy. I'm like, this is a Floridian. So no, it just um, always, always been, always been kind of like in that, uh, you know, in that, in that way. It's kind stuff. of a book of, of that core knowledge done. Honestly, Love that. like it's no, it's, no, but no, but I, I've, I've had friends from, from Florida. Like I, I was saying before, you know, um, before the stream, uh, you know, with Johnny and stuff, we, we, we played some shows back in the day with, uh, with dark sermon and stuff. And, and oh, sick. back when they were in, in, uh, reference to a sinking ship and, uh, 
Oh, but it's, had a song it, had a song done by 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 Kenny too from from like dude, the pen or whatever. I, I yeah, yeah, I I used to manage Kenny Gill, so yeah, I know. Uh, there, yeah. there we go. <laughs> yeah, that that Culture Killer record is was Kenny. Yeah, so. yeah, that's what I saw. I was looking it up earlier. Actually, yeah, that's awesome. The the one the one that dropped on the the record with Metal Blade, right? Yeah, that that one's Kenny, yeah. and then the one after is the EP is Austin. So, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I, that, that, that's, that's something I've always really, um, admired with everything I- you've been doing. I mean, we, we listened to a bunch of, a bunch of stuff, uh, earlier, uh, you know, grave view, like uh, body bogs dog. And, you know, I, I'm, I love, I've been loving all the new stuff from mood ring is fucking insane. I, I the EP is so fucking good. Um, and like, obviously, you know, we, since we've been talking now, you, you know, you've, you've mentioned numerous different like influences and stuff, but it's still, it, it's still fascinating to me to, I, I feel like a lot of people are kind of one trick ponies when it comes to the style of music that they're able to do. I don't know if it's got something to do also with the producer in you that's able to, 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 to go outside of whatever you're, you're normally used to. But I, I just, the, the thing I noticed with like all of the bands we were listening to, like none of them were a copy of another one. Like everything sounded pretty drastically different. And obviously right now, if you look at your two current bands, like, you know, psycho frame and, and, and mood ring, like while you could say both are heavy, they're like so fucking different, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, um, for sure. Is that something you can kind of speak on in terms of like, I guess maybe influences or, or how you go about writing different styles of music and stuff like that, maybe from a producer standpoint or just songwriting in general? I just think about everything as, um, aesthetically versus sonically, I guess, or like what son- what does a, how do sonics make up an aesthetic is like really what I think of um, in terms of like shaping something sound and how is it going to look after it's fucking rendered? How does this look mm-hmm. on paper? How does this, how does it look when it's written out? How does it look on merch? How does it look, you know, how does the art look, et cetera, et cetera. Like what does the band look like that, you know, created this? Yeah. Capturing a vibe. 100%. Um, so that's definitely a thing during the pandemic. I went through a fucking insane thing where I wanted to make a thousand bands every fucking day. Um, and that's why there's so many of those random bands, you know, we're just yeah. doing stuff. And, um, ironically, like everyone else from those bands that aren't bands anymore are, are like all not ironically, they're all doing great shit and killing it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but with Moodering, especially, especially like really, really, really like you, we can do whatever the fuck we want. It's really cool. Like I probably could drop a, uh, a Moodering song that was deathcore and no one would give a shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I really think we could. We kind of, I really wanted to set that precedent with the last record and th- didn't quite happen. I, we definitely played it a little safe, mm. but the EP, I wanted to fucking throw it out. Yeah, you went all out on the EP. Yeah. It was like the super heavy fucking bits. Like, yeah. even if it's like super short or sometimes it's longer, like I, I, those three songs have pretty distinctive vibes, but are like, you can't say it's just like new metal type, you know, like it, it's... It, you know, it's super fucking heavy at the same time. I don't know. It's super fucking cool. I think the irony is both bands are influenced by Emir. <laughs> so sure. that's okay, they, sure. they both are, dude. Um, like that's just the flat out fucking truth. Like you listen <laughs> to both, you can find it in both bands. Mm-hmm. So no, but uh, honestly, I think Emir deserves a lot of credit for for what they like. I've been saying that for like for years. Every time I mention Emir, people were like, "Ah, oh, th- that's not like, so like they, they became a meme." But like, yeah, you people know. would make fun of me because I was into like Emir, and I was like, "What the like? What are oh, you?" Oh yeah, talking I went through about? that. I went through that for sure. You know what I mean? Like I, I went through that big time. You know, especially the pick one. Do you like Acacia or do you like Emir? Like, I like mm-hmm. both, dog. Yeah, They're yeah, both yeah. sick. <laughs> like, yeah. what do you mean? Um, so, yeah, it's no, a, definitely hard to choose between. Like, I mean, Acacia is super, I mean, like, such a cool band, too. Like, I think they had like a feud at some point, and like, you know, I, talk, I talked about it, but um, no, I think Emir really uh, distanced themselves. You know, back in the days, there was definitely some trends and stuff, and they really. Just oh, they were doing their own thing, like for sure. They didn't no, care. Like, goodbye to the gallows. Like nobody sounded like that. No, they really did their own thing. I think Frankie's vocals are sick too. Dude. He wasn't afraid to try things. Almost like you, you can tell you, you know, new metal uh, yeah. influence and yeah. 
was just sick, dude. Even in Felony, when he came back with like almost, I wouldn't say hip hop influence, but I mean, like he was literally like talking, bringing his voice and his like. He, they were the only freaking band doing that in the the whole the whole scene. So, dude, yeah, I definitely, I agree. I I love that about them too. He's definitely like. I remember when Felony came out. Here's the hottest take: Felony is my favorite Emir record. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's rare, but it's a good one. I think people, I think it's underrated, really. Like, and, and I it, like how ridiculous it is. Like, it's not just you <laughs> know, it, top, yeah. it's just it really not, it, it ridiculous. Does not hold back. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yes. I do remember being surprised because I did, I did own this this CD. Makes me feel old a little bit, but yeah, I I had the CD in my car and I didn't know what to expect. Honestly, I just bought it i was just super excited and i was surprised because it was quite different before that it was like the respect issue right right before yeah. this okay the mm -hmm. respect issue by the way is one of the best album ever heard in my life and then uh i put it, it it was different and like you said over the top took me a few times listening to it and then i was like i fucking hated it when it came out i hated it at when first, I, I didn't like it. Yeah, yeah, I hated it. Everyone hated it. To be fair, when it came out, I don't think people. And were then I saw, it. and then they started playing it live. It was a little different mm. story. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I saw it live pretty much right after it came out. And went, okay, yeah, that slaps. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know. And I, I also like this dude. Uh, you know, I, I, he didn't do many uh, interviews and stuff like that. You can tell he's very introverted and like more in, in, in his space, but. Every time he, he talks, like, just hear this guy, like, he's extremely brilliant and um, creative. And, like, people would say rumors about him because of his lyrics and stuff like that. But if you analyze the person himself, he's great. Like, he's a cool dude. And he's, like, he's super talented and creative. So that's why when I started my channel, Emure was one of the very first videos i really wanted to make which i kind of regret now because it would be better if i would do it today than when i started but um no i give think it, they, they deserve a lot of credit give it a redo you know i could really i i should even <laughs> jesse uh their og guitarist jesse kudov is or however you say his last name is has a youtube channel and he's been posting all of his emir songs like that he played guitar on like doing playthroughs of them like okay. almost like every other day salem in the chat just sent it to me the other day and i i literally went to sleep watching it like oh shit um it's, that's it's awesome. pretty badass what, what, what's his name what do you yeah, say yeah i'm curious oh, what the fuck is his youtube salem can if you're still here can you drop a link <laughs> yeah i'd be super curious to check it out yeah i'd love to see that i went back to goodbye to the gallows um and like i i had really fond memories of the album and uh and then listening back to it i realized like there's like three really fucking banger in your face songs and then the whole entirety of the the rest of the album is like super slow <laughs> and like well goodbye to the gallows yeah no our record rips dude all, all the uh, way through yeah, i don't I know man it. i i tried listening to it uh, uh a few weeks ago and i was like wait i i thought I thought there were more bangers. I don't know, man. I have, but oh, the, dude, that back half is better. Like rusted over wet dreams and shit. I love it. Oh, I have a hard What's time with it, there? but that's like my 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 like personal like music taste at, at that point. But I don't know. I I feel it goes too it goes too slow for me for for too long. <laughs> but wasn't it on this one that they did like a freaking sick intro? It's just a big breakdown, but so badass. I think it's on Goodbye. Like I don't remember the the name of the song. I I'd have to look. Uh, but I was obsessed because it was what 2007, I believe, something like that. Um, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, a ticket to the paralyzer. Yeah, one of my yeah, yeah, yeah. still to this day one of one of the best breakdowns that I've heard. And I know people are going to tell me, well, it's kind of simple. Yeah, but it's just super good. Like, go listen to the breakdown of raining glass. I didn't steal it. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay, this dude. This dude. Uh, I'm gonna link it in chat. The uh, the what? Okay, we got Jesse. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's got like 400 subscribers on his fucking channel. Yeah, I'm it's subscribe it's, right it's now. just started getting more track, like more traction. So, uh, yeah, it's really I, cool. Jesse's a super nice guy too. I'm gonna try doing a shout out on my. Well, it's not like I, I had that many uh, subscribers. I, I, I'm gonna like it looks super. I just saw like what he's doing and I kind of want to listen now. So he's going to get more traction with time for sure. Like hundred percent sure. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I had a, a question. I don't know, Dom, if you had something else like I'm, uh, I'm, related. I'm chilling. You, you yeah, you, I'm, man. I'm very curious about something uh, to go back to like cycle frame. Uh, do you guys feel any pressure whatsoever? Because, you know, like you, you did such a great job with the EP and stuff like that. Like I'm talking expectation wise, like, do you put a lot of pressure on yourself? I'm just so curious to know that. 100%. Okay. Um, yeah, 100%. If I definitely was going back and forth over and over again, is, is ADP better than RGS? Does RGS smoke it? And before it was mixed, I had this phase where I was like walking around the house and I kept asking Brandon, I was like, is RGS better? And he'd just be like, you're out of your fucking mind. It's not. And I just, I'd be in my room, like listening to it, like, fuck. Yeah. And then it came, and then it came out and I was like, nah, like, <laughs> so, yeah. like ADP smokes RGS. I don't care what anyone says. So. Yeah. Because I think it's part of it, right? You guys are, um, I, at least from my perspective and a lot of people, you're in your own lane. Like Psycho Frame is a, it's a, its own thing, right? So like... We just really don't care about what anyone else is doing at all. Like there's... There is a revival scene happening right now for sure, but we're doing our own thing. We don't like love people in some of those bands, but they're doing their thing. We're doing our thing. It doesn't matter. We'll probably play shows with different bands than them. You know, in general, we will probably just want different things, you know? Yeah. So we're just Psycho Frame is really focused on Psycho Frame. That's it. You know, and what I, I think mean? that's the right state of mind. that. That's how it, it, you know, it's perceived. I think as well. Like I, um, when I first heard, I was like, it took me time to realize. Like my face, I, I do remember just being like this. Like, what am I even? I just wanted to listen to it again. I was like, what did I just hear? You know, and I. Um, no, I was just wondering because when you do something like that and you have such great result, and especially, you, you know, we've discussed your writing process and stuff like that. And you're obviously your art on yourself, right? As a, yeah. produ- so I, I was thinking like when I, when we were listening to it on stream, I was like, how are they going to top that? Like, I mean, like it's a lot of pressure to like, just come out with something like, you know, to the same level. So I was curious. Definitely. I think the thing that's helpful between the two is I was definitely looking, I guess, at like other influences between the two, guitar wise. Um, and I had more help from Dave this time around and Austin as well. So that mm-hmm. was definitely that played into it. Um, with my health stuff, Austin is like often, if my hands aren't doing what they need to do, he's, he is my brain in my hands. And I'll just be like, you know what the fuck I'm trying to do. Like, <laughs> like, please help me. Like my hands aren't working today. So that'll help. Um, sometimes, but with, I don't know, like with RGS, there's definitely like a lot of like infinite death influence on there. And yeah. then, and then later, like, um, a little bit of me, the masker stuff here and there. And there's like tinges that and like, kind of like the red shore, like that. Oh dude, that's the, the biggest shore, one. Like, I should have yeah. said that over fucking infinite death. Mm-hmm. I just, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, I, I hear it. I hear it. You're that's good. what it is. It's, it's, it's mm-hmm. that record for sure. Um, mm-hmm. unconsecrated. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's that is a big one for me guitar wise. And then I, I love that shit. Like that that oh, was my so game back sick. in the day. And, and Beneath the Massacre too. But like both both I, both of those to me is like you put those together in a modern setting like that, and I'm like fuck yeah. Like I, I listen to the to to the Red Shore type riffs, and I'm like that's that, that's what I've been missing. Well, I mean, it's fair to say, dumb is like your favorite stuff period in, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in well, so. I'm, i've always been more in the techie kind of i i, I love that side of of deathcore for sure yeah for sure it, i never when we made the band it was never my mission statement to be like make this technical now the mm-hmm. band is super technical and no one realizes it mm-hmm. no one no one realizes it at all and that's just like dog these riffs fucking suck to play like yeah, i can't i can't begin to think or, about uh, playing these fucking riffs dude i, I I'd be fed up just fucking pinch harmonics everywhere. <laughs> I'd be like, Dude, fuck this shit. <laughs> people have not caught on yet. And mm-hmm. uh, once, once like, I want people to try to like start to play the songs mm-hmm. and they're going to suffer. So <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nothing it, repeats. That's, that's a big part in it too, right? Like everything, all the parts are super short. Most of the parts kind we have, of we have like, repeating parts. 
No, no, no. But what I mean is within, within, even within a riff, it'll play twice, but there, it's, it's different accents. It's different transitions. It's different. And, and most of the parts are fairly short. You it's have like very a roller few coaster. On the two EPs, like very few really long drawn out parts where it's like, okay, you learn a riff and then you can play it for a minute. Like that doesn't yeah, all, happen with your, with your stuff. All killer, <laughs> no fill, or you got to keep yeah. going. Um, mm-hmm. um, so with RGS, you definitely had like this more like the guitar parts were like more. I describe things like with like objects, they're like a knife. They're like they're like blades worth ADP. It's like a fucking hammer. Yeah, so, sure. and that's definitely what, what we, I wanted more of. You know, um, where ADP, I was definitely looking back a lot at like Nail Dead Risen, um, yeah. and listening to that record going, what the fuck are they playing? You can't tell at all. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you can't even hear it. It's, it kind of just drowned out in the mix with so like those sick. fucking gurgly vocals on top. Wh- you're like, all right, this sounds sick, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And then got to bring in like more of that, like being the massacre. Like, I don't yeah. know, dude, we all really like that old Canadian death core. Like that's, that's our shit. So that's what's up. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's where it's at. Um, I'm your dad. Um, <laughs> oh, what the fuck? Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, dude, that like fucking Ion Dissonance remix of Solace that just came out. Good it's, fucking God. It is so fucking cool they're doing that stuff. The remixes. Uh, I, and they've, they like silently released it. They haven't really talked about it. They've been like randomly dropping these like vinyl releases here and there. But then the, the, the remix kind of came and went. I haven't heard anyone talk about it. Uh, it's fucking insane. It's so cool to hear those songs in a new in a Who new put setting. that out? Total Dissonance Worship? Is that? Yeah. It's yeah. it's Simon? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Simon Simon is the shit. Simon and is the uh, sludge, I should say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's um uh Dom uh their their like new guitarist uh, Dom that uh, did the who remixed it who works with the he does a lot of work with Chris Donaldson and stuff like that. Oh, sick, sick. Yeah. Very 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 familiar. Yeah. And yeah, they've been yeah. around for a long time, right? Dude, like, I love that band so much. They're 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 like before before MySpace, you know. Yeah, uh, I mean before before Deathcore yeah. and all that shit. They're, they're like were... super friends with like Despised Icon and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So at, at one point around... they were like living together and shit, like way okay, back, yeah, so... way back in the day. Yeah, it was it was a real you know, OGs. Like the, I mean, Mo- Montreal Montreal Assault, right? You know, it was the Beneath the Massacre, Ion Dissonance, and and Despise. Like those they're were, all that was the trio, honest. right? Yeah. They're so sick. Taking what those bands are able to do and like put a modern spin on it or like make it more goony, you know, just like yeah. get to the point faster. Mm-hmm. Um, there you go. Yeah, to early, answer the question in the chat Ion about. was like that. Oh, yeah, for sure. To answer yeah. the question in the chat about Brooke on a song, only if he's doing inhales. <laughs> so um, that is, go. that's the only way. Um, Love that. But, yeah, no, we. I definitely like, like just getting to the fucking point. You know, everyone likes Solace more than Minus the Herd, but Minus the Herd. Yeah, is but just... it's it's a lot slower. There's a lot more like kind of that like what we were talking about earlier, the intro stuff, and you know, just dude, like, I, lo- I love Minus. Minus. And I love that shit, but but it, it's different. It's a different vibe than the earlier stuff. The earlier stuff was just like in your face nonstop. Yeah, but it slaps. So, I'm... dude, I fucking love it. That that was, that was my shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm curious also about something else. And again, I'm going to go back to, you know, your your new album, but uh, maybe there's not much of a story behind it. But I'm kind of curious to know how it went with uh, Don from Waking. Like, did you know him? Did you just hit him up like we want you on your song? Like, I'm kind of curious to know just how it it happened. Like, I literally just messaged him and was like, check the song out. And he was like, this is fucking <laughs> sick. <laughs> and <laughs> that's pretty much it, man. <laughs> That was the easy one. All the other features, uh, like I said, Whittles in the chat. Um, so Kane is one of Kane from Violent Force is one of my, my best friends, and he's close with yeah. Whittle as well. So that was super easy. He crushed both of his spots. I mean, he's on half that fucking song. Um, <laughs> yeah. But he, uh, Whittle, like hit up Molly and uh, Gage on the other two, and he just those are his connects, and they sounded fucking sick. So again, like a lot of people questioned the features on the record like oh like why isn't it fucking you know dude no one wants to hear another phil bozeman 
fucking feature. I'll just say it outright. Like I, I, I mean, I, like I, the, I disagree. I mean, Phil's a goat. You know what I mean? Like yeah, but we've heard it. I mean, I, to to me personally, it's it's like I I love I rather see friends of the band on a on a track most of the time than especially some of these vocalists that have like done so many features at this point. I think but more I, than anything, it's a mission statement for us, like where we come from versus mm -hmm. like yeah. Vocal yeah. Olympics man, you know, mm -hmm. making crazy sounds. Yeah, Frankie feature needs to happen for sure. Oh my god, this would be dude, if you can yeah. if you can do that. Like I think I'm gonna if you do that, I think I'm gonna do like six video promoting it or something. <laughs> like Let's he's, go. he's done he's done features in the past too. I mean he's that done, would he's be done a bunch of he's stuff. been doing a lot lately. He just did one for uh, this lately uh, too? okay. Yeah, Canadian like hardcore slash new metal band called Flashback. He just did one for. Um okay. he raps on it. It's it's a cool song. That would be um, so sick. And and I feel like it would fit. Like it would like you guys as you know, you have like groovy parts, sick parts, like it would make sense. Uh, we would put him right on we, I just put him right on a song that sounds a part that sounds like old Emir. Like again, yeah. uh, we're definitely influenced by that shit. I mean the industry jacket is fucking super Emir, uh raining glass Emir parts. Like when we have like those types of breakdowns, that's what it yeah. is, you know. The the dissonant stuff like yeah, I'm not gonna fucking lie, like saying that's not where, not where I'm pulling it from. I love that <laughs> band, so. Yeah, and and uh, just to answer, jeez, uh, um, low point. He's been saying that he wants me to do a full length video for Psycho Frame, like on on, on my oh, channel. Dude. So of course it's gonna, for sure it's gonna happen. Um, you you might have noticed, but on my channel, Psycho Frame is the only band that I ever really mentioned or did something about outside of the MySpace area. It was the first time for me to take, you know, do a video and be like, okay, I need to talk about you know, uh, this band and, uh, the reaction was great. Basically everybody was just on board. So we really appreciate that. Oh, dude, so. you, you're welcome. It was fun to make if I'm honest. And it was, I was, uh, to be honest with you, I was a bit, uh, scared that it, because I'm not dissing, uh, you know, Lorna, but it was important for me to show like the difference between, you know, the new wave and what you guys are doing. So it was important for me. So at first I was like, am I, is it a good thing that I'm making like the, the, the like this, but it was the best way I could, you know, put it in and so that people understand what I, what I meant. So, yeah, no, I get that. We all the time, especially in our discord, we have to be like, yo, stop chill on the Lorna shit. Like we are, most of us are friends with you know at least a couple of them like austin's a good they're friend cool of dudes you know Dude, i've known austin forever austin watched mm -hmm. me get banned from a venue in new york because i was you know <laughs> being a drunk asshole and then uh moke is cool as fuck too like so mm -hmm. i've been friends with them for a long time and back when tom was in the band he was a big culture killer fan and stuff they've always been super supportive of everything i've always done always been awesome so like Tom was when, always really in the know of that like scene for early early back for sure um yeah i mean i, I love austin and moke so i mean whenever whenever our fan is like ah fucking lorna shore i'm like yo y'all gotta chill the fuck out <laughs> like those are our friends like if lorna is winning and playing stadiums we're all winning Everyone like, like wins. Oh, for yeah sure. people, dude people don't understand and, that shit dude oh, and that, they've been around forever they deserve every single bit of yeah, success yeah dude so it didn't like, happen like it didn't happen overnight dude and they're like, great i saw them live i mean terrific musicians they're just like amazing and even i see it all the time right in facebook groups and stuff like that which is not a very good place to go if you want positive but I, I've seen a Bad. lot, dude, <laughs> and and everybody's like, ah, they're overrated and stuff like that. They're amazing musician, and they wouldn't be there if they didn't deserve it. I think even like people are, love to shit on Will and stuff like that. He's an amazing vocalist, um, but it's just the point I wanted to make. I was trying to be respectful and and at the same time explain that like it's not. Psycho Frame is not part of the new wave. It's something else is what I was trying to explain. And, you know, when I said this is what I wanted all that time, it was kind of. Yeah. Like compare and contrast. I mean, it's, it's yeah. easy. It's yeah. It's just that sounds like this. We sound like that, you know, exactly. Completely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. To, yeah. There you go. To piggyback on what someone in the chat said, Lorna is great. I just kind of dislike the influence they had on the scene. Yes. Oh everything, my God. Yeah. Everything that has bitten like Lorna, dude. Throw oh it in God. the fucking garbage. Like, get that out of my fucking face. Like, I, I'm not that's listening all, to that shit. Yeah. That's all, that's all it is, though. I mean, Unfor if I want to listen to that, I'm going to listen to the original. I mean, like, 
why would I? It doesn't. It doesn't make sense, really. So um, it always happens, though. Every time there's like, a, for sure. Say, yeah. I mean, so it, it, it's part of it. No, but like, it was important for me to do like just. Uh, I was so stoked. I remember we were on stream actually, and and Dumb is like, okay, you need to hear Psycho Friend. I was like, okay, you know, kind of. Uh, I didn't. I never he heard you guys. Let me so. listen. I would talk about. Psycho frame every other day. <laughs> but I'm he so used to hear the same <laughs> sound of like the new waves. So I was like, okay, you know, like, okay, let's let's see. And he clicks and I'm like, what what is it? I remember I still remember my reaction. I just stopped talking and I was just like listening. I was like, this is so satisfying for me right now to hear that. And I was like just shook and the chat was like, do a video, do a video about it. I was like, okay, no, I, I, it needs to happen. So Fuck yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're obviously, we're all super stoked. But um, I, I think all of that says a lot um, to what you guys are doing. Like if Dunn, you know, listens to your song and he's like, holy shit, that's a banger. Like all those things, you know, people, um, people like me who, you know, cherish memories from the MySpace era instantly fall in love with your band. I think it, sells a lot you know it says a lot about what you guys are doing so i'm really fucking stoked on it and like again i appreciate it a lot i just wouldn't make it if i didn't you know wasn't enjoying it um yo deep lore was a sample from diseased cocksucker bit from oh outlast 2 it's like towards the end of the game um yeah it's I'd heard it when I was playing it, and I was like, "Yo, that's going before." <laughs> Just gonna this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, the, the, it's not. You don't have a riff bank. You got to sa- You got the sample, dude. Bank. <laughs> I wish I needed more samples because I'll call. I'll call them. And be like, "Yo, you got a fucking sample?" And everyone be like, "Uh, no." So, <laughs> yeah. And to answer GC said that uh, when I heard the snare, like I'm not kidding. I think I was talking about your snare for maybe close to an hour. I'm not kidding. Like I was just saying, like this what. This is the best song I've ever heard in my life. So, yeah. did you not hear Psycho Frame until Plot came out? Was uh, that the first one I I heard? I, it think, might. I think so. Yeah, and then and then Damn. Went back and, listened and to I the was rest. mad yeah. at myself. I was really yeah. mad at myself for that. Um, and like, and everything clicked for me. Like, I saw like I saw the image, the the logo, every like everything just felt right. And I was like, but when he played the music. I wasn't prepared for that. Like at at all, it felt like the the person I was, like the the fifteen sixteen year old uh, guy, was listening to like King Kong, Cure, Demolisher, all those bands, and was missing those days like crazy. Fuck yeah. When he clicked on play, I was like, it's finally back, but in a new way. Like what what is even happening right now? I love Slam. I like. It's like I told Dum. I'm like everything I love is in this. It's 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 this basically everything I ever loved in that core is just packed and it's it's cycle frame. So I really crazy. appreciate that. I think like our collective influence like definitely helps. And even if, you know, our singers aren't physically writing riffs, like I'm definitely thinking about what they like when we're writing. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, or their sound at a minimum, right? Like to, like how they sound and how that can contribute to to the whole mood and, and what's going on. Yeah, for sure. And and to like piggyback on what Whittle just said, it's because half of us grew up in it. That's true. Like yeah. there's three of us are, you know, um above the age of thirty, you know? <laughs> and then uh the others are very young. I, but I bring this up a lot. I, I think I think I look at you guys and there's a very clear difference, I think, in in experience as people who have been around, who have been in other bands, this isn't the first rodeo. You guys know what it's like. You guys have done the independent stuff. You guys have done the label stuff. You guys have, have done different styles of music. Uh, it's kind of like some sort of a super group you guys have going on with, with people from a whole bunch of other yep. different backgrounds and stuff. And, and I think to, to contrast to a lot of the stuff that's coming up right now in this, if you like revival, like scene, whatever you want to call it. Uh, most of those people are all super young, like super yeah, yeah. young. True. Uh, and, and I think that immediately kind of like, obviously there's like, there's everything we've already talked about from like a uh, songwriting perspective and, and the image and all that, like those are all thought out decisions. But I think, I don't know, 17 year olds don't think of those type of things when they're writing music. Right. So it's a different approach altogether. I mean, they weren't alive for it. It's just kind of like mm-hmm. where I'm at, you know. I I had definitely like take a problem with people making it that <laughs> weren't alive for it, 
but yeah. at the same time you're allowed to make whatever music you want to fucking make so if you're having fun i'm happy for you you know yeah. it's, a, it's a double-edged sword for sure no for sure and uh, i'll be honest with you i won't even attempt in, in my life to do a vocal cover of of what you guys are doing uh because i'm gonna first embarrass myself and be extremely self-conscious for the rest of my life but that being said i think it's going to be interesting in the future to see some covers of of what you got it would be very interesting to see that like guitar covers like play true even drums seen a few and drum s- drum covers uh, floating around you, you yeah. did okay cool. yeah the lack, of, the lack of drummer kind of helps that i guess right yeah for sure that's what's going on <laughs> um actually the guy who's playing drums for us on tour is in the chat uh casey um oh really okay. yeah um super fucking sick drummer plays in five million bands just like every other drummer i mean he needs to be a machine to play that i mean yeah. like this yeah. isn't easy drum what, what, what was it i saw the other day i think i think it was in your ama on 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 reddit something like every uh if you're a drummer and you you play over uh, 220 bpm you it's like you're a fucking that, entrepreneur bro you're in yeah, seven yeah, bands they're all paying you i was like yep <laughs> It's absolutely it. fucking insane. <laughs> it, would it be fair to say it's, when I read that, I it's like, the yeah. art or like the artist's spot to fill in, in like, let's be real, like in a band, it's the artist's thing to find, right? A drummer. I guess it depends on who you know and whatever, but like, it's such a, I'm always going to be extremely impressed by drummer in general. Like, how the hell, like, can you even do this? Like, I write drums and then I try it and I'm like, oh my God, that's never gonna that's that's never gonna happen they're they're a different breed honestly um dude it is fucking crazy funny like some psycho frame lore our guitarist was actually originally our drummer and when he was up staying at my house when we started working on adp i was like yo i'm gonna have trouble finding anyone else to play these fucking guitar parts too (laughs) like why don't you just play guitar and well We'll find the the drum entrepreneurs. We'll figure it out. So but he, awesome. he happened to be good enough of a drummer to to drum for Psychoframe, but also good enough of a guitarist. He's super sick at everything he does, <laughs> and super young. Honestly, it's 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 fucked up. Um, it, it makes sense though. Like, look at everybody that's in this. Band. No wonder, dude. like, that it sounds like this and it's good. Like, they're you guys are all you know very experienced and and good at what you're doing and also i wouldn't say multitasking how do you say that like can do a thousand th- different things like how do you just say that i don't even know i English. guess uh versatile Is yeah there the you go yeah, yeah there you go. go that was what i was looking for thanks for helping them um <laughs> no, yeah. no, i'm kidding <laughs> I'm kidding. No, but it's co- it's super cool though it says a lot if someone can go from an instrument to another it kind of tells you of his of his talent right yeah that means a lot for sure like i we definitely really appreciate that he um he's like a brutal death metal like he's a slam drummer like he fucking really fast blasts really fast grabs um so syncopation is not necessarily his thing <laughs> so when it when it got into like more complex patterns that's kind of where he started falling off a bit and could he have like grinded and like worked it and figured it out yeah for sure but mm. we just kind of wanted to get some other shit going on yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Oh, for sure for sure <laughs> thank you by the way low point low point is our like he's gifting subs to like the entire planet uh today and it's just it's super cool thanks man that's awesome i needed to to point it out yeah um no, no but it's 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 like truly awesome to see um the words i've been using for psycho frame so far is like it seems it felt it feels right like, I don't know if, it, if it, everything seems to be falling to place. I know you guys are working super hard, but I mean, like from the outside, it feels like you're releasing music. Everybody's stoked on it. And it was the like, I remember on stream because me and Dom, we said like, OK, we won't listen to it even when it drops and we're going to listen to it on stream and the whole day it was the hardest thing i think we've ever (laughs) done like we couldn't click i was seeing it everywhere like you know the teasers everywhere youtube and i was actually working on youtube the whole day i was like i'm gonna turn crazy i need to and and we didn't and we listened to it on stream and i remember sitting down and being like isn't it crazy that we already know it's going to be good? Like, we know we won't be disappointed. Like, how many times in your life can you listen to a freaking album and know right away it's going to be good? Like, I'm not even scared, so it's crazy, you know? It's, I, really, it's, I really appreciate that. Yeah, I don't even know what to say. Welcome. Like, we're just, <laughs> we're doing our best, you know what I mean? Like, 
Yeah. If you guys have a bit of a a bit of like a cult following, would you say that? Well, one hundred percent. You notice one hundred percent. Because it's like it's kind of crazy to see, um, kind of to contrast, uh, like the numbers, and then contrast like how much I hear about Psychoframe, and then I look at Yan and myself, and we're we're always talking about it, and then I, I it kind of clicks in my brain. I'm like, oh, mo- most people are like me and Yan, like can't fucking shut up about it. But there's something there's something special about that. I think like you you see it you see it in your Discord. I see it in all the circles that I'm in. Like people uh, people talking about you guys. Um, I don't know, man. To, to me, to me, there's like, especially with a, a kind of a fan base like that, I, I have a hard time imagining a world where it doesn't like pick the fuck up, like crazy. Same, same. I don't think like the band like from the outside like seems very um, welcoming, and mm. I think that's like a cool thing too, like where people want to be a part of something. They're like, sure. oh, they're like, oh, damn, this is kind of fucked up. You know, so um, I definitely, I definitely like that about the band. It, it, you know, we're not a big band by any fucking means, like at all. I mean, even mm-hmm. our peers and the other revival bands, like they're all generally like the same size of us, if not bigger. But it's very weird. Like once you like Psycho Frame, like you're like fucking in that shit. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It, it's it's absolutely nuts. I've never seen anything like it in my entire fucking life. You know. Right, because you've had a, you've had a bunch of bands. You work with a ton of bands. Like you, you see what that kind of relationship typically is between like kind of the size of the band and how people act towards it. You know, Dude, I think a really good example is is Moodering. Like I, Moodering is like literally like ten times the size of Psycho Frame, mm-hmm. and I don't know. Like it's that rabidness isn't there. You yeah. know. No, there's, there's something a- happening, definitely, yeah. for sure. Like, it's something we can feel weirdly. Like, it's like you f- you feel it, that, that something's happening. And uh, I keep seeing it also when I talk with people. It's like, I last time I was excited like this about Deathcore, uh, it was back in MySpace days. So it kind of tells you a lot. I, think I feel a lot like of people have that, yeah. Yeah, I feel like low-key people were waiting for something like that, if that makes sense. It definitely makes sense. I also to add on to my point, like it's we're just doing it for ourselves. I'd been mm-hmm. wanting to do it for a while. There were some bands popping up, and I was like, "Well, that's not how you do it," you know. <laughs> so, uh, so I I'm just, let me show them how it's done. I'm just fucking. I'm just fucking around. Um, no, you're I'm just, not. I do no. I I am not. I I, 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 I love all my I love all my jits. Um, so I, we we wanted to do it. We've been talking about it for a hot minute, and then so we just really did it for fun. And I think when something is done for the intention of your like making it for yourself, like making music that you enjoy, and the intention is just like not to ride a wave, anything else, yeah. ride a wave, or like impress someone or do anything. Like I don't know, like that. It shows. You can always tell if the band does that. It doesn't have to be deathcore. It doesn't have to be death metal. Anything like when someone, their intention is like, oh, I just wanted to make music that I like. You can fucking tell. And those are the biggest bands in the world. Like this is a super random one to throw out there, but, um, Loathe, Loathe may only mm. makes music for themselves, and they haven't released an album in four years, and now, yeah. dude, they're fucking huge. Yeah. So yeah, and like when they came out with that like electronic album and all these things, you know, like. The the truly a statement of like we're doing whatever the fuck we want, you know. Yo, straight up, dude. Uh, yeah. No, but I think wouldn't be fair to say that it applies to a lot of things. Like we're talking about music, oh, but sure. I feel like it's even when you start like just an example, like if you start like a clothing line, right? Everything that really got traction was because someone did his own thing. There was a hype, underground hype. It started like this. People were like, what, what is this? And then people were talking about it and it's create a hype as opposed to like starting something being like, oh, we're going to follow this. You know, it's it's not the same. You're not doing it with the same intention. You're not doing the same passion, the same, you know, creative uh, process. And um, not to give myself any flowers, but I think part of the reason why my channel is working on YouTube is really because my only intention was to document the era that's super important to me. I didn't want to do any clickbaits of like drama or whatever. I just wanted to honor all those bands, did it for myself, did it the way I wanted to do it, and it seems to be working. So I feel I like, like the channel. Yeah, it's awesome. 
Thanks, yeah. man. It means when a lot. You, when your intention is to do something for yourself and to create art or anything, you know, fucking music, art, clothes, content, videos, yeah. fucking food, if you're a goddamn chef, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> like, if your intention is to make yourself happy, then others will fucking smell that shit. It has an, it has an aura, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, I think I think there's like two sides to that spectrum in the sense that I think a lot of people as they as they grow up, they they end up realizing this sort of thing. Right. Like you you with with experience, you you kind of be like, OK, I don't I don't want to chase the thing anymore. Like that's just I'm not at that point in my life anymore. But I think there's the other side that's like the super young, naive, like uh, uh, kids that are starting in music and stuff like that. I, th I think uh, Deathcore started that way. I think it was yep. a lot of people that were doing it super fucking young, carefree as fuck. They didn't care about the other trends or stuff like that. And that that's what makes, for me personally, like I think that's that's what makes music. It's just it's just interesting for me to see that it can happen in, in both directions. I think we all kind of get uh, sure there's like exceptions to the rule like they're the very artistic artists that remain artists their entire lives. But I think we all kind of go through a phase where life becomes serious and then we 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 like you know, we try so hard to make something work and that's when the, the trends kind of pop in and then we fall back out of it. I think that happens a lot in, in music. For yeah. sure. Yeah, I mean, you can be influenced by anything and like wearing your influence, there's nothing wrong with wearing your influence on your sleeve, you know? So, there's always a thin line. I Oh, yeah, be to, between to, like copying and, and being influenced. Yeah, for sure. Dude, because like, we're not, you know what I mean? Like, I'm talking about intent, but to pretend that no one's ever done what we've done before is fucking asinine. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I've everyone did what we did before, and that's why I wanted to do it, you know? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to do it more aggressively and like, I don't know, more ignorantly. In your own so, way. But yeah, like, I think it's, exactly. it's fair to say you, you, I wouldn't even say, like you need influences in some, some oh, yeah, ways, dude. you know? If, if you don't, you're, you're just a blank page. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just you know like i you need to i feel like a huge part of this passion is you being a fan first right like a huge part of like making you want to do something is because you've been um inspired or you fell in love with something and you want to give that same feeling or at least for yourself it feels like you need to do it um and from what i hear tonight it's like you guys did it simply because that's exactly how you wanted to do it that's it you're like that's what yeah, we can sure. bring to the table that's our thing and no other intention we just wanted to have fun you know what i mean um it's it's very ironic because i was still playing guitar live for body box at the time and we played a show in savannah with vatican and when you know yeah. when vatican was still active and mike was a singer of vatican at that point and Whittle was there and ended up ended up playing half the set together. And I, I, was, I remember I was still drinking at the time and I was like standing on the side of the stage like, hmm, <laughs> like, like there it is. Like, okay. And then of course it worked out. Like, you know, him and I talked about it that night and I think it existed really quickly afterwards. So mm. yeah, it was fucking cool. No, yeah, I, I, um, another example that's like really outside the scene, but you, you can kind of tell, um, people like Ali Sykes, for example, like I'm bringing in, he's not in the heavy thing or whatever, but you can tell that he's just like, this is what we're going to do. We're doing that. Don't care what people think, even if it's changing or whatever. And you know what happens? There's still always, it's, they're succeeding no, no matter what. So they do super well. I'm not I am not the hater of that band, you know. There's a lot of people who do. I I if they drop a song, I'm listening to it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I want to I want to know. I might not like it or I might. You it's know? always interesting though because you you know, you know, they're still creative and they're going to do something like it, it won't be something you heard like a thousand times for sure. Like they're going to do their own their own thing and the you know i i bring up bring me the horizon as, a, as an example very often because as much as i can understand that it was a shock for a lot of people when they you know moved on and they changed i think um you know doing music for yourself is extremely important and i feel like that's what 
they've always done. Like they wanted to do something to do it. And, you know, it's more risky, but it, it works. So, yeah, no, a hundred percent. Like they truly just do their own shit and it, it's fucking paying off. You know, I think <laughs> like the only the only way I think I could kind of counter to, to that is that some people have that mentality, but their music sucks. Oh, right? yeah, like that, yeah, yeah. You know, you, you still have to be a good artist. You no, still have sure, to be sure. like putting in, you know, sometimes you shit sucks. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, yeah. Shit sometimes sucks. shit just sucks. <laughs> and yeah. you need to try things, and too. And, and that's OK, dude. Like you're allowed to put mm -hmm. out bad music, you know, yeah. so. No, for sure. I'm for just, sure. I'm I'm not gonna fucking listen to it, but I'm happy for you. <laughs> you know, yeah, I think there's like uh, there's certain artists that it's like everything they put up seems to be good, but there's also certain artists that like for years what they put out it just doesn't. They're looking for something, and first thing you know, you listen to something new, and it's it's killer, and it's finally like they found what it. So every road is like completely different. I think it's I think it's fine, you know. So. It takes um, some bands a, a while to get to that uh, point, you know. I'll I'll say it for Moodring. I think that the first two Moodring EPs I was biting and didn't really know what I was doing. And then, I don't know, I guess with the last EP, clicked. I was like, okay, yeah. this, is, this is for me. Like, fuck it, you know. I don't care mm -hmm. if anyone likes it. And the second you lose that that expectation of like will other people like this it's it's very freeing and it just feels it's just great so. oh for sure and it's not necessarily uh people in the chat are talking about like the self-title of suicide silence but let's be real wasn't it the album that that was right like it was after mitch right it was the mm -hmm. first thing they drew yeah, yeah. like there's one takes, there's one before it there was one before it yeah you can't stop me True. You're right. You're right. Um, but oh, yeah, 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 I yeah. respect, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't listen much of like what, what you're doing right now, but, um, I respect the hell out of this band for being able to, uh, after something like that. And even I would say Eddie, like, dude, filling those shoes. Like, I don't even like it's, it's, I respect them for keep, you know, keeping going and, and doing their stuff. Like they, they tried certain, certain things and it works. Sometimes it, it doesn't, but I think there's some, something needs to be said about the fact that the, they kept going, Eddie just full on, you know, to, to they, the road. They've always been super upfront about loving, you know, all things like corn and Deftones yeah. and all these things. And th those are the influences that, that came up in, in those like later albums. Right. So yeah, I think Black Crown is like super new metal influence. And then you can tell Mitch was like moving on a little bit from what we were hearing before. Yeah, but they especially like went more into it after, after Mitch. Right. And I think, I think to me, it's like, whatever they, they were, they were doing what they wanted to do. I think yes. to, to kind of bring it back to 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 the the convo we were having i think you know they were just authentically doing whatever they wanted to do sure it, it bombed and people kind of laughed at them but you know i i think at the end of the day like they yeah. just made something they wanted to make and that's it but it's special though you see i i went through it to like a, such a different feeling like i know like i've seen some people making jokes and stuff like that but for me it was different for me uh, in my mind it was like they're trying to do something after losing well, well, I was about to say the top frontman ever in deathcore. I still believe that if I'm no, if I'm it's, that's, that's factual information. It's deathcore's mascot, mm -hmm. and when he died, it's like, what the fuck happened to it? You know we, what we, I mean? We, all, we always say a deathcore died when he died when he passed. There you go. It feels like it. Yeah, it it really does. Um, yeah, awesome person. Our um, the band that was in silence. Our old bassist was super super close with them so when we went out to california like post his passing the first yeah. thing we did is we went to his grave site before it was open public um mm. with his girlfriend of the time of his passing and that was like super somber and then we hung out with eddie and mark a lot um while they were in the studio making you can't stop me and uh mark was like paying us to trim leaves off a of weed um <laughs> and he, he was just paying he was paying my band in weed and everyone was like yeah this is great yeah, so i was yeah. just yeah it's, dude they're, they're great dudes and they get to do like like yeah again they made that record because they want to because they were having yeah. fun doing their shit they got to make a record with ross robinson who is new yeah. metal man and that was, that was their dream like that's why they went there like yeah you know. for sure dude i mean yeah 
No, but like, I think like it's, I don't know, for, for me, it's extremely respectable that they kept, you know, they still kept going after it. How many bands would have just said, okay, we're, you know, we're, we're over, we're done. You know? Yeah, 100%. I mean, also imagine being Eddie and taking oh my shit, God. the I shit that he does every single fucking day. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, fuck no. that. But for me, though, like, and, and again, it's my dreamer type of like, I dream of a world, with, but, but it's like, it's not like it doesn't help anyone to like shit on the guy like first of all if you ever listen to all parish in your life you know how of course cool and talented this this dude is he's not like coming out of nowhere and trying to pretend he's like super respectful of of like mitch memories and stuff like and he was hurt as much as like you know his close people um and again i don't think shitting on someone trying it like it's not um something positive towards mitch it's not something positive in any way it's just like shitting for for shitting and the best thing you can do like if you don't want to listen to it just don't right just dude that's such a good fucking point like no one's forcing you to listen to fucking anything like dude I mean, oh, people, it's so fuck it's so fucking easy to just shut the fuck up yeah people, you're bad at, people like, got twitter fingers man it's just what it is you, i fucking hate it dude it's, i it's mean so you, you know what i do like for the most of my time on social media i do i do the every time i i see some people doing that i'm like you could have taken that time and just write a sick comment on one of your favorite thing instead like that's what i do like i just go around and i'm like you guys are killing it that's so cool. I send a message to someone. I'm like, you're such a cool guitar player. And I listen to many things like even pop punk and whatever. So I, I just compliment people and I feel better. But it for me, it's hard to understand the mind of someone who's just like, you're shit. You're terrible. That's the worst I've ever seen. Like, oh, it's, no, but you can, it's you can because there's it, a, you don't have to say it out loud. <laughs> it's because there's a computer screen in between them and they can't yeah, get yeah, their exactly. ass beat. For sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's why. No, you're you're totally right. I, I think can't they wait would for the never technology say that. where you can slap someone uh, through through the screen. <laughs> That'd be great. Fire. Um, no, but for for me, like, and we we talk about that often, me and Dumb. But like, if at any point in your life you've tried doing music or something artistic, and you've put some time and effort, you don't feel like going on someone's project and just like completely shit on it in their in their face you don't have to listen to it but like i feel like those i could be wrong but i feel like these people who do that they just have no clue and they just like they think about themselves they're like i they're just pissed for example like they miss mitch or whatever and and they're just like basically reacting to anything like um and when you're unhappy and you see someone driving sometimes it's really you know it's kind of the quick thing that comes to mind so yeah definitely it doesn't it doesn't contribute anything i no. wish that like people who did that realize that the only thing you're doing is boosting our engagement true, so, <laughs> true. and, yeah, and keep, we talk keep... shit back so like yeah. we love to i mean a very good example of that would be Attila, attila right like they've been shit on for so long and and i mean friends was like it was intended like really intended i mean the guy does a video in the mansion with a big you know chain in his neck and, and but people were biting you know talking about the album it was working extremely well and millions of views so even if you share it and you say hey they suck dude you still shared it <laughs> you I, still I, I, it. I know the man pretty well he he knows what the fuck he's doing oh so. he's great extremely yeah. good businessman great guy too like um I, I would be curious to ask like how you like did you know him for like a long time or it's been well yeah i mean silence played shows with attila back in the oh. day but um their bassist was briefly in mood ring um, oh shit yeah and i also at one point i was living fuck like a few miles from his house and okay. and at the time i'm sober now but at the time i was partying a lot <laughs> and i was he, he yeah 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 you, you, <laughs> he, it hurt. The, the, the two worlds met it <laughs> hurt. Yeah. he's kind of pretty open about that, <laughs> that he yeah to party. yeah for sure that's not a that's not a bit that is very real <laughs> um yeah so so you know he definitely knows what he's doing. 
Yeah, it's not even my thing, but fuck, dude, look at mm. look at his life, look at mine. <laughs> so. No, but I mean, like, yeah, the point is, it's 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 still working. Like, I see many people, like, I mean, let's be real, every day tr- people are trying to put down others and stuff, and I do understand the logic behind it, even if I would I wouldn't do it. Um, but it's funny every time I'm like, you're still helping the person massively. Like you're commenting, you're watching their page every single time. So what you're sending to like Instagram or any platform is that you're a fan, no matter what you, you write. So yeah, lo- love or hate the guy. Why do you think he's doing it? Because that's the reason why, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> exactly. I don't have the fucking balls to like try to engage people like that. I, it would just drive me insane. Like I, I couldn't get on, I couldn't get online every day and be like oh this person just told me to you know yeah yeah We're just constantly well, being in, being in negativity yeah i can't do it i won't I be like oh, oh, go ahead sorry sorry oh no you're good I, I was about to say i swear even if my comments are overwhelmingly because as dumb mentioned many times on my channel i'm not very controversial like i'm just like super optimistic with music i'm not shitting on anyone i'm not bringing drama or whatever so like it would be hard maybe to to hate but i swear to god even today every time i post at first i'm always a bit terrified of what you know the comments are gonna you know what it's gonna be or whatever when i do a short and i'm just goofing around with breakdowns and in, in, in my in my room I'm, I'm always like it wouldn't you know destroy me but it's it's still kind of intimidating to put yourself out there and just like i wouldn't picture myself um baiting people and knowing for a fact that they're gonna you know come at oh yeah all fuck that. That. i, could have, away, I yeah. couldn't deal with it i'm i'm way too insecure to deal with that kind of shit i just <laughs> I wouldn't be able to just like take it at face level. I'd be like, okay, well now I found your fucking address. So uh, <laughs> like, like there's, there's no fucking way, dude. Like I, I can't just take it lying down. Like this fa- fa- Facebook profile. Okay. This is where you work. This is who you're married. Okay. Let's, let's make a few phone calls. There's just like, like yeah. under, like there's like a, an article on under baiting online. And there's a, another one that he's in jail. Like, the, like the two, two weeks after. Something. We have we have someone in our camp who loves doxing people. Um, mm. Mike's wife like literally loves doxing people more than anything. It's like her favorite thing in the world. Like That's granted, scary. like if... she, she they deserve it. She's never done it to anyone undeserving. It's usually like someone who's done something a real, a real horrible. Life mm. Yeah, but dude, it's absolutely <laughs> insane. Like I, it's funny as fuck. Like we had this. We've had some terrible shit happen to us. Like you know, and. Next thing you know, we yeah, had yeah, prob- we had information. Prob- problem solved. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like, if as much as like, if you do that to someone who doesn't deserve it, it's terrible. But yeah, if, no, of course, it was it was like bad shit. You know, when you do bad shit, like it's vigilante it, justice. Yeah, in my book, <laughs> if you do bad stuff, you need to deal with what happens. You know, with your with your actions. So th- there you go. <laughs> so um, no, but like, yeah, I, I agree with you though. Like, it's it's it, like when I see friends or when I, I saw back then, like people doing that, I was like, these dude really does. Like, they really don't care at all about what's gonna happen. Like, they thrive on it almost. It, it really feels like that. Like they just. For sure. I've, I've actually asked them before. I've been like, how does that feel to, you know, he probably genuinely just be in that doesn't constantly. care for it. Right. It, I think like at one point it was like eating at him a little bit, but like, I don't, I don't know, dude, look at, look at his life. Like yeah, they yeah. are, they are big because of controversy and they've been controversial since fuck. 2000 since the beginning eight seven mm-hmm. since rage probably since their album rage or even before Dude, then, before that soundtrack since to a the party man no yeah, true yeah. they were already controversial i loved it if i'm honest but yeah they were extremely yeah people were talking about them because they called them like party core right like oh they're just like they're not part like they people wouldn't take them seriously but the funny thing is they were not even taking themselves seriously like they would just write fun stuff and don't care so people were just confirming um their vibe but if you remember back in the myspace days um like people would shit on bands very easily for way less than that like you need like there, there was like these metal dudes who would get on your case if you do something differently so of course attila was 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, so. I mean, that's still the case now, but yeah, they're definitely, definitely in, that's an easy target. You know yeah. what I mean? There you go. It's a that very was, easy target. There we go. That, that was, uh, was what I'm trying to say. All right. Yeah. I want to be my, mindful of, uh, mindful of your time, Hunter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, true. Do uh do you have anything you want to say to the people? Anything that you guys have got coming up or things you guys are working on, whether it be Psycho Frame or Mood Ring or anything uh you want to plug? Definitely. First off, I want to say that we don't take enough time to thank people for how much they support us and how hard they go for the band. I really, really want to emphasize that even though our online persona is, you know, you know, big dicks all over the place. Um <laughs> We really fucking appreciate that shit, like, more than you guys ever know. Like, I love our Facebook group. I love our Discord. It's it's super fucking sick. Um, the community at first was toxic, and now it's getting better. Um, mm-hmm. We really, really, really fucking appreciate all the love that we get. It's, you know, it doesn't matter for the biggest fucking band in the world. It definitely makes shit worth it. Um, and I appreciate y'all for having me on to talk about it. Um, Pleasure is ours, man. Sure. We we have uh, some shows coming up with Balmora at the end of February into March. It's a very short run. Um, we're going to be touring again this summer. Can't talk about that. And um, might have some new music this spring, but also can't talk about that yet either. Um, <laughs> I'll, t- so, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, spring, summer, something. like I'm, We're going to be yeah. working on it soon. Uh, and Mootering is wrapping up an LP right now, and I it's making me lose my mind currently. So <laughs> everything I everything I said positive about psycho frame writing, I feel the exact opposite about mootering mm-hmm. currently. That's why um, you go back to writing a psycho frame album uh, every six months. That's how it happens. Yep. So <laughs> that makes uh, sense. Literally, yeah. I, I love my band. I love everyone involved in this shit. So uh, psycho frame is like the best band to be in. It's fucking sick. So, hell yeah, yeah. man! Yeah, well, we're thank whole, you, thank our you so much for community for- and people where we really are, like you say we you appreciate us and it's 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 awesome. But let's let's be real, we all like we're extremely excited. Like it was it was awesome. Thank you for for doing that. We were looking for. I think we we would. <laughs> we were talking about it every stream and every time we had the chance. Like we're super stoked. Fuck yeah, dude! Well, again, thank you so much for having me. Of You're course, welcome, man. man. We'll uh, we'll catch you catch you later. We'll uh, we'll keep in touch. All right. All right, dude. For sure. Up. For sure. In the future, <laughs> right. video on Psycho Frame on my channel for sure. In the future. Just hit me up. I will. I will give you the uh, the damn encyclopedia. Perfect. So. <laughs> Looking right. forward to that. There's a lot of lore already. So. Let's go. There we go. Right, I'm ready. All right. Peace out, man. Take care, man.